Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Rabbishrach li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqdada min lisani. Yafqahu qawli. All right, sisters, we are doing hadith number 29. An amazing hadith to do at this time, you know, uh, in our lives because we are... Um, you know, saying farewell to Ramadan, like today's day 27th, we have two or three days left. And this is such a powerful, um, it's such a powerful hadith to study at this time. I think it's, it's a beautiful hadith to study and to give us that, um, you know, a, a really good idea of how to continue post Ramadan to save ourselves. Uh, may Allah make us among those who are saved from the hellfire. May Allah accept our Ramadan, our fast, our sadaqah, our qiyam, our sujood, our dua, you know, everything that we have done for his pleasure. May Allah accept from us. Uh, may Allah truly, truly, truly accept. May Allah forgive us and help us to come out of this Ramadan completely, um, you know, with our sins completely erased. Allahumma ameen. I'm going to read. The hadith is pretty lengthy. And uh, it has some passages of Surah Al-Sajda in, uh, in this hadith. And the reason I'm excited is because, you know, we just finished uh, teaching the Tajweed of Surah Al-Sajda. And if you guys are interested in, you know, self-study, uh, the Surah, uh, self-paced study, the Surah, you can find uh, the class still available online on our website at n4u.com. Uh, just click on Tajweed Surah Al-Sajda. It's one of those surahs that the Prophet ﷺ used to recite before going to sleep, just like he would recite Surah Al-Mulk. So it's part of the going to bed routine, if you will, from the Sunnah, you know, reciting Mulk and Sajda. So in this particular hadith, you know, um, the, the book says, the hadith 29, what enters one into Jannah? That's what I'm saying. It's just such a powerful, the timing is just amazing. So I'm excited about the timing. All right, so uh, I am going to read it now. Um, I do have my neighbor's daughter who is playing out and singing and all of that. And so I don't know if that's going to come into the recording, but if it is, um, that's what that is. All right, so Bismillah. An Mu'adi ibn Jabal, radiyallahu anhu, qal, Kultu ya Rasulullah, akhbirni bi'amalin yudakhiluni al-jannah. ويباعد ويباعدني عن النار قال لقد سألت عن عظيم وإنه ليسير على من يسره الله تعالى عليه تعبد الله لا تشرك به شيئا وتقيم الصلاة وتؤتي الزكاة وتصوم رمضان وتصوم رمضان وتحج البيت ثم قال ألا أدلك على أبواب الخير الصوم جنة والصدقة تطفئ الخطيئة كما يطفئ الماء النار الله أكبر والصلاة الرجل, والصلاة الرجل في جوف الليل ثم تلا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم تتجاثى جنوبهم عن المضاجع يدعون ربهم خوفا وطمعا ومما رزقناهم ينفقون فلا تعلم نفس ما أخفي لهم من قرة أعين جزاء بما كانوا يعملون حتى بلغ يعملون ثم قال ألا أخبرك برأس الأمر وعموده وذر وذروة سنامه قلت بلى يا رسول الله قال رأس الأمر الإسلام وعموده الصلاة وذروة سنامه الجهاد ثم قال ألا أخبرك بما بملاك ذلك كله قلت بلى يا رسول الله قال فأخذ بلسانه سبحان الله فأخذ بلسانه وقال كف عليك هذا فقلت يا نبي الله و 
وإنا لمؤاخذون بما نتكلم به فقال فكلتك أمك وهل يكب الناس في النار على وجوههم أو قال على مناخرهم إلا إلا حصائد ألسنتهم سبحان الله رواه الترمذي وقال حديث حسن صحيح Sisters, translation on the authority of Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu that he said tell me a deed that will admit me into paradise and distance me from the hellfire he said so Rasulullah said you have asked about a major affair and it is easy for whom Allah the exalted makes it easy worship Allah and do not commit shirk with him establish the prayer pay the zakat fast Ramadan and perform hajj to the house so basically the five pillars he then said so Rasulullah then said shall I not show you the gates of goodness fasting is a shield charity extinguishes sin as water extinguishes fire and the prayer of a man in the core of the night so these are the gates of khair basically he then recited sallallahu alaihi wasallam then recited from uh, surah to sajda ayah 16 and 17 translation their sides forsake their beds to invoke their lord in fear and hope and they spend out of what we have bestowed upon them no person knows no person knows what is kept hidden for them of joy as a reward for what they used to do. He وسلم, then said, shall I not inform you of the peak of the affair, its pillar and its uppermost part? I said, yes, O Messenger of Allah. He وسلم, said, the peak of the affair is the Islam. Its pillar is the prayer and its uppermost part is jihad he sallallahu alaihi wasallam then said shall i not inform you of the paramount of all of that i said yes o messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam took hold he took hold he grabbed he took hold of his tongue and he said restrain this subhanallah I said, so this is, you know, Mu'ad is saying, I said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, will we be taken to account for what we say? The Prophet said, may your mother be bereaved. Is there anything that topples the people on their faces, or he said on their noses, into the hellfire, other than what their tongues reap? SubhanAllah. This is the end of the hadith. So this is related by Tirmidhi and he said hadith Hassan Sahih. So let's look at explanation of this amazing, powerful hadith. On the authority of Mu'ad ibn Jabal that he said, tell me a deed that will admit me into Jannah and distance me from the hellfire. The Sheikh says, paradise is the place that Allah, the mighty, the majestic, has prepared for the pious servants. May Allah make us among them. Therein is what no eye has ever seen, seen and no ear has ever heard. There is no danger of the heart falling into evil. The hellfire is the place that Allah has prepared for the disbelievers. Therein are severe punishments, may Allah save us, that are well known from the book and the sunnah, meaning the Quran and the sunnah. He asked about this affair, meaning the Sahabi asked about this affair because he considered it the most important thing, meaning to be granted Jannah and to be saved from hellfire. May Allah be pleased with him. And it, it is appropriate that every believer consider this the most important thing. For one to be admitted into paradise and distance from the hellfire. This is the greatest success due to his statement. The exalted said in Surah Al-Imran uh, 185, 
Translation, so, who, so whosoever is removed from the fire and admitted to paradise, he indeed is successful. The life of this world is only the enjoyment of deception. Now that save us. The Prophet Sallallahu said, لَقَدْ سَأَلْتَ عَنْ عظيم. You have asked me about a major affair. You have asked me something great, right? عظيم. The Sheikh said this means something that is tremendous and it is the success of being admitted to paradise and saved from the fire. Nevertheless, he said, so even though it is something عظيم, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, and it is easy for whom Allah the Exalted makes it easy. So this, um, the Sheikh said, it is possible that this statement a major affair is referring to the action, is referring the actions that admit one to paradise and distances one from the fire. And that the it, وَإِنَّهُ, that action is, you know, لَا يَسِّرُونَ عَلَى مَنْ يَسَّرَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ Meaning easy for whom Allah makes it easy. So this affair, you know, Rasulullah is about to tell Mu'ad radiallahu anhu, um, you know, he's like, okay, it's azim, but Allah can make it easy for whoever he wants. So it, it, it is easy for whom Allah facilitates it. May Allah make us among those people whom he makes the, 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 the actions of Jannah easy for us to do. Allahumma ameen. Um, Rasulullah then explained this in detail. And so he went on to uh, talk about the five pillars. Worship Allah, do not commit shirk with him. So that's la ilaha illallah. Worship Allah. Um, obedience to him by complying with his commands, abstaining from his prohibitions. Um, so being sincere in the deen. Um, and also, he says, from the actions that admit one into paradise and distance one from the fire is establishing the prayer, a salah, right? So, what to qimu salah, establish the prayer. The meaning of tuqimu, the sheikh says, it means establish, right? Establish is to perform completely. So know the pillars, the obligations, the conditions, all of this of the salah. Uh, the third affair is to pay the zakat. So it is the wealth that Allah, the, mighty, uh, the majestic, obligated it being spent on the people from the specific wealth with its specific conditions that are rightly due to those deserving it. This is well known in the books of the scholars. May Allah bestow mercy upon them. But the Sumu Ramadan, fast Ramadan, meaning the month of Ramadan is also well known. Fasting is worshiping Allah. So abstaining from those things that may break the fast from the beginning of Fajr until sunset. And that's what we are in. We're in the month of Ramadan. So um, you're doing, these are the five pillars of Islam. So if you do these five pillars, right? That's part of what saves you from hellfire and admits you to Jannah. And the Sheikh says the testimony that Muhammad is a messenger of Allah is included in the testimony that La ilaha illallah, if it is not mentioned along with it, since the testimony that La ilaha illallah means there is nothing worthy of worship in truth except Allah. And from the worship of Allah is believing in his messenger وسلم, and following him. The Shah is just, you know, explaining, even if you do not see that in, uh, if you do not see following uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu it is implied in that, okay? Um, he then said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, shall I not show you uh, the gates of goodness? And the Shah said, this means, shall I not lead you uh, to the good? And so uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he didn't even wait for the answer because he went straight to say fasting is a shield. as psalm Jannah, right? Fasting is a shield. It is a shield that protects from sin while fasting and protects from the fire on the day of judgment. So the reason I said that this is an amazing hadith for us to study now is because, you know, when we earn Ramadan, you know, fasting should be part of the things that, you know, we continue post-Ramadan. And alhamdulillah, our deen is, is, is making it easy for us. Like really, honestly, sisters, our life coach sisters, but honestly, our deen coaches us. <laughs> you know, you just follow the Quran and Sunnah and you're being coached every day. You, you, you have a purpose, you have a goal, you have, you know, you have everything broken down and spelled out for you, really. So we, we are going to enter the month of Shawwal and we have this huge reward of fasting six days post-Ramadan 
It's like fasting the entire year. So this is such an incentive for us to keep fasting after Ramadan. So the thing is, even though it is not an obligation, it is highly recommended because the reward is so great. For six days, so six additional days, you may get the reward of fasting the entire year. But this is a huge incentive and it's just pushing us to do what? Continue the khair post Ramadan. Continue to fast post Ramadan. Let fasting be part of a habit. Even if you do it just once a month or you do it twice a week or you do it three times a month, however you can, but do not wait until next Ramadan to start fasting, right? And for us women, mashallah tabarakallah, we don't even have a choice because we have, most of us have debts. In Ramadan, most of us have some days that we have to make up because we didn't fast the entire month due to menses or any other breastfeeding or you know um, pregnancy. And so in this case, right, we always have a debt that we need to pay. So this, even though he mentioned fasting Ramadan, he still, you know, added, and should I not show you the gates of goodness? And so fasting is one of those gates of goodness. And he says, so shield, it protects us from sins. And so it will preserve us after Ramadan when the shatin are released. So charity extinguishes sin as water extinguishes fire. So this is another, you know, we have in the habit, the Prophet was the most generous he was the most generous, um, um, sorry, he wanted to, I'm sorry, I wanted to turn off this timer and make it stop. Okay. All right, sorry about that. I'm back, inshallah. <laughs> okay. So what I was saying was this, the next item on the list was charity extinguishes sins, just like water extinguishes fire. In Ramadan, um, we learned that the Prophet was the most generous and many people pay their zakat in Ramadan and you guys know the last 10 days, is the whole month of Ramadan, but especially the last 10 days, people are, you know, even if they're not in the habit of giving charity, they kind of increase and do more charity in Ramadan. So this is another habit um, that it will be good for us to continue post Ramadan. And because why? It extinguishes sin. So if we are among those people that Allah al -Afu has erased, that we have, you know, uh, we come out of this Ramadan having our sins completely erased, then we know that, you know, after Ramadan in the month of Shawwal, we're gonna start building up sins again. And so, being in a habit of giving charity is a way for us to extend to 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 wash these sins away the way fire i mean the way water um extinguishes fire subhanallah and the chef says likewise with charity nothing remains of the sin just like water um nothing will remain of the fire if water goes on it okay so and then uh rasulullah said and the prayer of a man in the court of the night. Here, the chef, the chef says, the court of the night um, is the middle of it, right? And he says, the most virtuous portion of the night is the second half or the third part of the night after the first half. Uh, Dawud alayhi salam would sleep through half of the night, stand in the third portion of it, and sleep in the sixth portion of it. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then recited this ayah in Surah Al-Sajda and um, the Sheikh said he recited it, utilizing it as a proof. So like the dalil for what he was saying. Contained within this verse, as is apparent, is the forsaking of the beds, meaning for prayer at night, and their spending from what Allah provided them. These two are charity and the night prayer that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in this hadith. He then said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, should I not inform you of the peak of the affair, its pillar and its uppermost part? I said, yes, O Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the peak, and so the, uh, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said the peak of affair is Islam. The Sheikh says, the thing that is the greatest of affairs, the peak, the greatest of, the, of affairs, the peak of the affair is Islam. Since Islam is lofty and nothing ascends over it, 
by Islam, people ascend over the evil servants of Allah, such as the disbelievers, those who commit shirk and the hypocrites. Its pillar, meaning the pillar of Islam, is a prayer, since the pillar of something is what supports something else and sets something else aright, not being set aright except with it. So you cannot say that you're Muslim and then you, you're like, no, prayer is not needed. So the prayer is the pillar of Islam since abandoning it expels one from Islam into kufr. And Allah's refuge is sought. May Allah save us. Oh, may Allah save us, sisters. I was coaching a sister who was telling me she went through a crisis and, uh, and abandoned Salah for a while. But alhamdulillah, she's back to it. May Allah just preserve us and save us. It, it's, it's, it's really scary. Its uppermost part is jihad in the path of Allah. The hump is the uppermost part of the camel's back. Its uppermost part is its zenith. The uppermost part of Islam is jihad in the cause of Allah, since by way of it, the Muslims rise over their enemies. He, saw, he sallallahu alayhi wasallam, then said, shall I not inform you of the paramount of all of that? SubhanAllah. Meaning the paramount that all of that is dependent upon. I said, yes, O Messenger of Allah. He وسلم, took hold of his tongue and he said, restrain this. He said, restrain this. Meaning do not speak unmindfully since it is dangerous. I said, O Prophet of Allah, will we be taken to account for what we say? This is an inter, in, interrogative sentence, and its meaning is, will we be held accountable for what we say? And therefore the Prophet ﷺ said, may your mother be bereaved. And here the meaning is, may you, may you deprive her until she becomes bereaved from, you, from your depriving her. The intent of this sentence is not its actual meaning. Like it's, it's, a, it's an Arabic expression. It's not really, um, it's not to be taken literally. The intent is an encouragement and allurement in understanding what is being said. You know, um, it's, it's, it's almost like, are you serious? Are you, your question, are you serious about your question? You know, it's, 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 it's really for the, the, the listener to really know the importance of what is about to be said, right? So here it says, the Prophet says, did... He said, is there anything that topple, topples the people on their face, on their faces into the hellfire other than what their tongues reap? And so here it says the meaning is that when a person does not control his tongue, it is a reason for him to be toppled on his face in hell. And may Allah save us. Allahumma ameen. So here from the benefits of this hadith, I think we have, uh, yeah, we have, I wanted to finish the hadith today, but. Time is up and we have a, about three, four pages left. So if I keep reading, we may go into like almost an hour. So we'll stop here and we'll um, pick back up inshallah next week. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we, we've explained the hadith. So all we have left are the benefits from, these, from this particular hadith. And we'll go over the benefits uh, inshallah next session. Um, I'm going to post the... Um, I'm going to post the question, the trivia questions, but subhanAllah, this is an amazing, amazing hadith for us, for us to be reminded of right now. So any uh, good is from Allah, any mistake is from me, may Allah forgive me, um, and may Allah make it easy on us, may Allah help us to be among those who control our tongue. Oh, this is one of my dua sisters, this is one of the things I ask Allah to aid me with, and um, to master this tongue and to reduce it and to reduce the kalam and uh you know this this has been my dua and i pray the same for you especially us women you know may allah aid us with that subhanaka allahumma wa bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant wa nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh sisters